The college football transfer portal is starting to fill up with some notable names. So on today's video, it's an early look at the top quarterbacks who have entered the portal so far. A lot of starter or at least part-time starting quarterbacks have hit the portal. We'll break down the top 10 as it sits currently with, I think, more names still to come. And if you want more college football transfer portal videos from myself and others here at Chat Sports, then type me in the comment section right now. We'll go from 10 to 1, plus mention some other names who are in the portal at the end. First up is Tyler Shuck, who is once again back in the portal. Began his career at Oregon, was a highly touted recruit. Goes to Texas Tech, and it didn't quite go the way he wanted it to go. And he's back in the portal once again. Uh, this is going to be as, as a graduate transfer, I believe. So he gets the, the third transfer, which is a lot of movement in college football free agency these days. Uh, he's at number 10. Was a title recruit coming out of, of high school, but has not lived up to it at all thus far. G5 might be his best path. All right, next up is Mitch Griffiths out of Wake. Another starting low-end power five starting quarterback who's in the portal. The numbers are okay. Uh, under 60% completion percentage, 11 TDs. I don't think Wake was in a very good spot this season, so I'll give him some benefit of the doubt. Uh, Mitch Chris makes this list over a bunch of other like power five starting quarterbacks now in the portal. Uh, Noah Kim was a part-time start for Michigan State. He gets in there. Uh, UConn's quarterback, the G5 is, is in the portal. Uh, that's Zion Turner. Minnesota's quarterback's in the portal now, too. So there's a lot of guys who are hopping in right now. Number eight is A.J. Swan out of Vanderbilt. Some would argue the Commodores made a mistake benching him this season. Uh, not that Vanderbilt was playing all that great anyway. The completion percentage is not great, but compared to some others on this list, 22 touchdowns is at least somewhat appealing over the course of his career. Uh, there's some good size there. So it is a, a player to at least make note of uh, as he enters the portal. Another that's kind of all a similar group, right? Low-end, power five guy getting in the portal. Uh, Brendan Soresby out of Indiana as that team makes a coaching change. He now hops in the portal, does offer some running ability, almost 100 yards, despite yeah, maybe not the best uh, quarterback play, or offensive line play, uh, I should say, this year. 19 touchdowns, five interceptions. Honestly, until we get to the top three, maybe the top four, I don't love the quarterbacks currently in the transfer portal. I think we're going to get some bigger names in the coming days and or weeks. Now, shout out your favorite team in the comments section. Who is repping their fandom the best right now? It's the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Number six, another small school guy, or let's just say a small school guy, Matthew Sluka out of Holy Cross has put up very impressive numbers in his career. Again, smaller competition there. Not a great completion percentage, but 59 total touchdowns in his 40 games played at Holy Cross, 15 interceptions. Uh, we are now in kind of the uh, intriguing young small school recruit phase. At number five, again, I, I don't love any of these guys quite yet. I'll go with Sam Levitt, the other Michigan State quarterback. We did mention Noah Kim now in the portal. Reason why he's on here is he was a four-star recruit last cycle. 312 overall, the number 21 quarterback. There were some outlets had him in the top 150. I think, I think on three had him up there pretty high. Uh, number one out of Oregon. So there is some interest. Uh, there should be some interest there. Wouldn't be shocked if he went back to like Oregon State, maybe. They're maybe going to be in the market for a new quarterback. Washington State could stand out since he's not in the portal yet. But I would not be surprised if Cam Ward once again hops in. There's been some alleged buzz out there that he's getting the, uh, the tampering offers already. Now, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. It is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Here's why I love Prize Picks it is you against the numbers. You're not battling thousands of other players and pros and sharks. You just got to get more than or less than right on two to six player stat projections, and you watch the winnings roll in. You can mix and match sports, so you can do NFL and NBA, college football, NFL, college football, NBA, whatever. I love their reboot policy. If a player goes down due to injury in the first half and does not return, that player is rebooted. Your picks stay in play despite the injury. No one else offers injury insurance in DFS and the flex play. Super awesome as far as I'm concerned. 
I just got to get two out of three picks right this week on uh, my conference championship game slate. Give me at least two J.J. McCarthy touchdowns, more than Tra Troy Franklin receiving yards. He's electric. And more than Jalen McMillan pass or receiving yards in what could be a Pac-12 shootout. Head over to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. That's prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Now to some of the more intriguing names, and one you probably don't know of very well. It's New Hampshire's Mac Brosmer, who has put up very good numbers for a smaller school and is already drawing some notable interest. Most notably, Minnesota is in the mix for Max Brosmer. 62% completion rate, 68 TDs, 25 interceptions. The Golden Gophers trying to kickstart their offense with a more experienced quarterback. I'm always intrigued by those lower-level quarterbacks making the jump up. It's a big jump. We have seen some guys have success in the past. Time for the big three who are currently in the portal. Again, I think we might get some more in the not-too-distant future. Will Rogers out of Mississippi State is next up here. His numbers dipped. The offense changed. It wasn't as nearly uh, east-west air raidy as it was under, uh, under our, our good friend, the Pirate. May he rest in peace. Uh, that's, why the, the, that's why the completion went down and the yards per attempt went up, or yards per completion went up. But the touchdowns also plummeted this past season. If you want to have a quarterback that is shown, he can sling the football around. As long as there's some better playmaking ability, I do think Will Rogers stands out as a very viable option for teams. So, you know, you've seen teams like Kentucky, for example, add transfer portal quarterbacks. They did it with Devin Leary. Would not be that surprised if they went in a similar direction or someone in that Kentucky-ish range uh, this time around. Now, do you think the transfer portal is good for college football? I get the, the negatives against it. I think especially for quarterbacks, it is a good thing. Think about your Heisman Trophy favorites this year. Michael Penix, Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels, not necessarily in that order. All three guys were transfers, and they benefited from the portal. So it might be better for the players than it is for some of the individual teams, especially some of the smaller teams. But I do think for players, it's absolutely a good thing. But what do you vote for? Y for yes, N for no. Let's go to Tyler Van Dyke out of Miami. Uh, he has been a, a challenging player for me because I loved what I saw back in 2021. 25 to 6 touchdown interception ratio. I go, okay, the breakout's going to happen. He's going to take a huge step forward. This is going to be awesome. He's going to thrive this upcoming season. Then Josh Gaddis comes to town uh, as the Hurricanes offensive coordinator, and it just all kind of falls apart in the one year he struggled it was also banged up he's been banged up two years in a row uh wasn't that great last year played better at the beginning of the year got nicked up again left some time got injured uh sub back in for that brutal injury that the uh, the backup uh suffered it's just it, he's he's he he tricks me he's a big kind of loopy motion guy because he's so long but there i think there is some talent there i don't know where he ends up uh, his interest is going to be very intriguing to me. It will also help identify if I should pay attention to him next season. But I, I am very scare-roused what's going to happen with, with Tyler Van Dyke moving forward. Now, we will have you covered on all things college football here. Transfer portal, recruiting, etc. Playoff rankings, too. Hit that sub button so you don't miss out. YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV. Number one, though, is Will Howard out of Kansas State. Uh, the Wildcats do have a young, intriguing quarterback. I think they want to give some playing time to. But Howard will draw interest. He played quite well this season. He offers some dual threat ability. Uh, into, put, put into a tough spot back in 2020 and 2021 to a certain extent. Played a bunch last season too. Had his best year ever. 61.3%, 2,000 plus yards, 24 TDs against 10 interceptions. If you want a stabilizing veteran quarterback, which... Sounds weird to say for college football. That's more of an NFL phrase, but that's where we're at. It's free agency after all. I think Will Howard does stand out. Now, bonus points if you mention a quarterback. But name a player who you think ends up entering the transfer portal. I'm going to shoot my shot with Cam Ward. Sound off for me in the comment section right now. Some other players I want to mention in the portal. Max Johnson in there again. Never thought he was that good, but he, he could probably go start at some 
you know, G5 or something along those lines. Tyler Noop out of Georgetown, smaller school guy. He's in the portal too. Hank Backmeyer, yeah, he's in the portal again. Uh, he's going to be entering year six, I think. I know. It's, an, it's just weird with the, with the COVID year and the redshirt stuff. It's insane. Uh, he's in the portal again. I don't know where he's going to go. Went from Boise State to Louisiana Tech. Where are you going to go next, Hank? Uh, Spencer Petras in the portal. I kind of think it, I don't think he's that great, but maybe it was just a bad fr- uh, Kirk, or, uh, Iowa offense under Kirkskid. I, I, don't, I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, Cole Snyder, uh, Mac starting quarterback in the portal out of Buffalo. Uh, I saw Blaine Gabbert, or sorry, Brett Gabbert, Blaine's younger brother, go in the portal last year for Miami and then return. Wonder if Cole Snyder could do something similar, but I think a lot of these guys are going to enter the portal and at least explore their options. They got to be careful, though, because you might get sniped from behind if you do that.